All right, here we are, Pat Forty. How you doing, man? Doing great, Brett. Good to be on with you. This is the podcast that all of swimming listens to, so this is an honor <laughs> for me. Well, I appreciate that. Listen, I don't, I don't consider myself a journalist by any means in the realms of what you are and the, and the respect that you have and what you do. So um, it's an honor for me, but uh, I don't want to screw it up. I'm a bit nervous talking to a real journalist. You know, like I'm just <laughs> a guy be- that talks about swimming. That's all I do. That's great. That's what people want. Let's yeah. them what they want. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, you're you're known for kind of your your football, your bas- college football, college basketball, you know, your your expertise in those areas, but uh, a lot of people may not know that you're you're a swimming family, really, aren't you? Yeah, boy. Uh I was actually just thinking about it when we I was logging on here, going back to uh literally the my first date with my wife. Mm. Uh, she, we met, she was at, working at the newspaper where I was uh-huh. and, uh, our first date we went out to, we walk into a bar and she said, Hey T, how's it going? And I look up and it's Mary T Maher oh, wow. and they're childhood friends. They swim, they grew up swimming together. My wife was a swimmer. Um, and so swimming's kind of been there from the get go. And then of course we had three kids who were college swimmers. So yeah, that's been yeah. a big part of our life. How did that come about in terms of your children? You know, you're obviously deep in in sports and they've got the choice to do whatever they want, I guess, you know, when they're young. But how did all three of them end up swimmers? Um, You know, it kind of I I, I don't know there was like natural gravity or or natural selection or what. But, uh, you know, they we we belong to Lakeside Swim Club. Just Mm -hmm. a great pool to have fun in. And we took the kids, you know, from the time they were born and they just loved the water. Um, we're big sports family, so they played everything, you know, they were involved in basically every sport you can play and they just kind of ended up liking swimming the most and probably being best at swimming. Um, you know, so one after another and they started, you know, at the little little summer club neighborhood pool, you know, we belonged to Lakeside, but they didn't swim for that team for quite a while, not until they were ready to take it a little more seriously. And, uh, it, you know, just happened that we had so much fun every summer with it. And eventually then they went year round and, um, then it was just time management. How many other sports can you play while you're swimming? And eventually right. my oldest, by the time he, he waited all the way till he was a high school sophomore before he stopped playing other sports, middle son, he stopped earlier, like sixth grade. And then my daughter, she stopped, uh, after eighth grade and there was, they were all swimmers after that. Yeah. So let me let me try and get the order then. So the your wife swam at Northwestern, correct? Yes. Okay. So she was there. Then then your eldest Mitchell, he went to mm-hmm. Missouri. So that was like twenty thirteen yeah. to seventeen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Clayton, your middle one, went to Georgia. Uh, got this at, as twenty sixteen to twenty. And then yep. uh, Brooke uh, went to Stanford, uh, seventeen to twenty two. So yeah, you pretty cool. Nailed it. Right there. Yep. Very cool. How, now, in terms of college choices, how much influence were you able to have in any of that? Well, I think there was definitely their choices. I was a good gatekeeper because I, I mean, I cover college sports. I know what recruiting yep. is about. I know how the, right. all of this works. And so, you know, when the letters started coming and the emails and the calls and everything, I was very excited for one thing because I thought it was pretty cool. Um, but I can at least tell them, you know, kind of, okay, here's how the process works. And they're going to be, you know, mailing who knows how many kids. And they're going to have this number of scholarships. And so, you know, they're going to try to develop relationships with you. And you'll be able to kind of sense what their real level of interest is and gauge what your level of interest is in them and in the school. And uh, we're pretty, you know, dedicated academic family. So that was a big, big part of it. My wife is a school teacher. um, And so, you know, that we, we vetted that side of things very uh, uh, seriously as well. Yeah. And, you know, it, it was then it was just, you know, the kind of the normal process of whittling it down and choosing who you want to visit and then getting, you know, scholarship offers and, and, and going from there. But uh, uh, it was I, I do think I was able to be helpful. One thing I did do for all of them. Well, not for Miles Mitchell. He, he didn't know he was going to swim in college until after the state high school meet his senior year. He was just mm-hmm. going to be a student. And then he had a really good meet and he won the state 100 free. And it's like, oh, yeah, I, you know, I can walk on at least. And, and so that's what he did. It was down in Missouri and Northwestern for him. The other two, it was pretty clear for quite a while. But one thing I did with both of them, I, I created notebooks and I said, give me your top 
five to 15 schools and, and I will give you all the information about them. Right. I will give you enrollment size, distance from home, average weather to average temperatures in September, January mm-hmm. and April, mm-hmm. uh, size of the team, mm-hmm. where your times would fit right now in terms of, of if you went, if you went there, uh, you know, with your current times, just all that stuff. So they at least have something to look back through. And then I told them, make your own pro and con list, uh, just using this information. Actually, you know what? That's the best advice anyone could give anybody, you know, wh- whether you're uh, in college sports or not. I think that's the best way to go about it. And that's the advice I try to give parents and and, and kids that are looking at schools is like make a list of pros and cons. And yeah. then, you know, weather is a factor. You know, like there's no way there's no way I was going to go to Missouri. I mean, it's just too cold. I'm, I'm not going there, you know, but um but, you know, and then someone might say, well, I don't want constant sunshine out in California or something. I don't know. But, you know, the, it's all a factor and you've just got to take it all into account because what I think ends up happening to these kids is they may pick uh, a, a team for a, a certain coach, you know, and a coach uh, ends up leaving. Or, but, or they might just say, well, I, I like that team. They're being successful right now. And, and the whole dynamic of the team changes. And then, and then when they get there, they don't realize, look, they're only in the pool 20 hours a week. The rest of the time... Right. They're they're out and about, you know. It's the schools, it's, mm-hmm. it's it's everything else that that you that you listed there that really matters, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. That's I mean, swimming's a huge part, you know, of their lives, yeah. but it's not everything when you go to yeah. college. And there's so many other factors that need to be considered. And you know, it's funny as you were talking through that. Like I was thinking, Clayton, I so he was a 400 IMer, and mm-hmm. he was very excited. Bob Bowman was recruiting him from Arizona State. Like, whoa, right. okay, that's exciting to me. And then I, I right. put down on paper, it's this far from home. He's like, mm, right. that might be a little bit far. Georgia, a right. little closer, you know, and Jack Bowerly in same right. strength program strengths. But, but yeah, yeah that, I mean, there's just a lot of factors to consider. And, yes, who can make you fastest and, you know, who can you win with and that sort of thing, sure, important. But, but far, far many more things to, to take into consideration. Yeah. Now, now, as your kids are going through college and, and, you know, you have to be the swim parent, how, how did you decide what type of swim parent you were going to be? <laughs> uh, I, it just kind of happened, I guess, by evolution. And <laughs> so I was a football and basketball player in high school. I was okay. I wasn't, you know, very good, but yeah. I loved, I loved playing. And I was a, I coached all the kids in everything. Um, but I didn't coach them in swimming and that was probably a good thing. Um, you know, probably I, I, I mean, we had fun with it, but I was probably over eager as far as like wanting them to tell them everything, you know, and if you do this, you can do that. Da, 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 da. And I'm right. you know, it might've been a little bit too much of a, right. a eager parent slash coach in football and basketball for them. Swimming. I couldn't tell them anything, you know, yeah. I yeah. was, I was just there to say, Hey, nice job. Do you need, <laughs> you know, a, some, uh, an orange slice, uh, you know, my, my wife could give them input, but she really didn't. She, she was pretty good about just kind of letting it play out. And they had great coaches. I mean, yeah, they did. I, they, they did. Unbelievable. They good schools. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And even going back before that with Mike DeBoer at Lakeside and, and I mean, they just had phenomenal coaches. So it wasn't like we needed to, you know, give them any input anyway. So I was the guy, Brett, with like with, with the Lakeside parents, we just had so much fun. I was the heat sheet guy. And we'd have group parents mm-hmm. around, and I'd I'd go through it in line. I'd, I'd be telling everybody, "Your daughter heat free lane five. Your son heat five lane six. You know." And so I was that guy that, and I would write down everybody's times and everything. So I just had a blast with it, just being the kind of the organizational guy and and helping cheer. I have a loud voice, so I could do that. <laughs> but you're also yeah, you know, you're you're a smart sports man. So I'm sure that if if you're into a sport. You want to know everything about it, I'd imagine. You know, you're, you're that type of guy. So, like, you must have at some stage kind of dug into the numbers a little bit and, and the best times and had a pretty good idea of, like, look, where, where they're at and what they're doing. Oh, yeah. No, I, I did. I'm a stack guy, and that's yeah. part of my job. So that, yeah. that definitely came naturally. I did. Yeah. <laughs> I embarrassed my wife badly at uh, the Kentucky State 7 and 8, like the 8, eight and under state championships or whatever. Brooke was swimming the 50 butterfly and she touches and I jumped up and said, that's a state record. <laughs> Cause I knew yeah. what the record was in my head. And so yeah. I, you know, I've always kept track of the times and yeah. probably spent yeah. too much time on USA swimming, you know, checking all the yeah. age rankings and all that business, but, but it was fun and it kept me involved and excited about it. 
Well, that, that's when they're young. How did it progress then? So, like, yeah, Brooke ends up going to the Olympics and winning medals at the Olympics, you know, like being being a true superstar, you know. So it's like, how did how did your persona as, as dad and, and supporter uh, change? Like, when she's behind the blocks, you know, at an event like the NCAA's, you know, A final or the Olympic Games, like, how are you inside? How are you feeling? Yeah, I was like every other parent. I mean, I was, you know, wildly <laughs> nervous, incredibly proud and excited, but, yeah, you know, super nervous for all those events, especially the, yeah. the big ones. Um, you know, I, I mean, it's honestly it as much fun as we've ever had just watching all of them do their thing, you know. But, yeah. uh, you know, with Brooke in particular, when you got to those big meets, it was kind of like, is this really happening? You know, I mean, mm. I, I remember distinctly, I guess it was, gosh, 28 the numbers are years are running together 19 2018 u.s nationals in irvine and yeah. it was myself and my wife and her mom and i would drop them off at the front of the pool and then go park around the back and it gave me like a 10 minute walk back to the pool and every day i was just like this is unbelievable we're watching Clayton was swimming there too we're watching our kids swimming in the u.s national championships this yeah. is so awesome yeah and then brooke ends up in the 400 im final and she's like in lane six, I think. And she's winning after 300 with Melanie Margalis and Leah Smith. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I mean, it's like big time yeah. competition. Yeah. And I was just like losing my mind. I couldn't yeah. believe it. And yeah. she ended up getting second to Alice McHugh, but she made the pan packs and she made world championships. And right then and there, I was like, oh boy, she really might have a chance at the Olympics, you know? Yeah. And so it was kind of thing that was too big to actually even talk about out loud, really. And then yeah. after that, it's like, eh, okay, we, we can kind of talk about this now. It was really yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Man, the odds of having, you know, one out of your three kids go on to get a scholarship in college is, is pretty minimal. But, like, having three and then having then one go on to the Olympics, I mean, being being someone that works for Sports Illustrated and ESPN, I mean, you must have kind of had a little pep in your step as you're walking around the hallways <laughs> a little bit, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, there are many stories, like – being at the NCAA basketball tournament and me like, you know, being the proud dad and like, Hey, come here and look at my laptop. I'm about to watch my daughter swim. Yeah. In the, you know, the 500 free at the NCAAs check yeah. this out, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you know, and, and yes, covering college sports my whole career and having them be at the height of it in their sport was kind of like beyond dream come true. Like pinch me, you know, like yeah. it, 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 because it's just so much in my wheelhouse and everything I have done, all the time. Excuse me. The hard part then was trying to manage covering the NCAA basketball tournament and getting to the NCAA swimming championships and seeing them swim. Yeah. Yeah. Now listen, someone that's on the inside of, of big time sport in America, what, what can we do uh, as, you know, swim fans, as, as people in this kind of swim world, is there anything we can do to get more eyeballs on swimming? You know, like, it, I mean, it, it is where it is, you know, I understand that, but like, is there anything we can do really? It's a great question, um, and like it's my favorite sport. And I always tell people, man, like, hey, just come to a meet and mm, watch and yeah. sit with somebody that knows will help you watch and tell right. you what you're watching, you know. Right. And I've gotten some people to do it, and I, I hope to get more. Um, heck, I want to go to this Indiana Louisville dual meet here in like a week and a half, and, and bring bring as many people as I can to watch that. That should be fun. But yeah. it's tough. It's a tough sell. I still, I think it can be done. I, you know, it's not going to be swimming is not going to all of a sudden stand shoulder to shoulder with yeah, yeah. The, the football and basketball, but I think yeah. you can increase the audience. I do think some of the things that have been done like ISL and some of the things, I, there's some gimmicky stuff that I don't like, right. but, yeah. but just things that fans can grab onto casual yeah. fans. I I'll tell you this, uh, Brett, you know, I covered the 2008 um, Olympics in Beijing where you know, Michael Phelps had a decent meet. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, like, you, you come out of there and you are so jacked up. I covered every one of his race right. shows there every single day. Yeah. And I remember emailing people at ESPN in, in programming and saying, mm. hey, what about a series of meets featuring Michael Phelps and U.S. swimmers, dual meets against Europe, against Australia, dual in the pool kind of yeah. stuff? Yeah, right. You know? I got no response. I mean, they just mm. didn't want to hear it. Mm. But I do think yeah. there is potential. Um, you know, I wish, I think one thing swimming can do, we can do a better job telling the stories yeah. of yeah. the people, 
you know, yeah. I mean, incredible people, you know, you're around them. Yeah. You were one yeah. of them. And, and, yeah. and so, you know, they're compelling personalities. They're smart. They're engaging. Um, we can do better job with media literacy and better job with making the athletes present themselves and then yes. sell the sport. Yes. Better, hey, I was going to say that actually, what, what could the swimmers do too? Cause there, some, some of this is on them too, right? No doubt. No doubt about yeah. it. And yeah. I, I actually, in 2015, I guess I talked to the USA swimming national team about it. And one thing like, look, don't be afraid of the media. Sometimes swimming can be uptight. And like, I know <clears throat> better than most people, the, the amount of, from a media standpoint, the amount of routine that goes into preparation, swim, and then follow through afterwards. Nobody understands warm down. Like, why can't we talk? Well, they're warming down. You know, I mean, like, we, I think we've almost crossed that hurdle, but the other thing I said, I said, um, you know, LeBron James talks to the media before every game in the NBA finals. Right. If you are hiding before the Olympics, you're not helping your sport and you're not helping yourself. Yeah. <clears throat> if you yeah. are impossible to find, impossible to get a hold of, won't sit down and talk for 10 minutes, right. 15 minutes, you got to be able to do it. You got to mm -hmm. put yourself out there. And I think the governing bodies need to help encourage the swimmers to do that. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with that. Um, in, in terms of this day and age of, of social media, too, I think that a lot of people are doing a good job with brand, you know, their own yes. brand, their own their own kind of individual brand. So, you know, give us some advice for swimmers on things that they could do to help build their brand. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, you know, I, I enjoy following a lot of swimmers on mostly like I follow them on Twitter. because I'm more of a Twitter person, but I learn right. more about them on Instagram because they're younger and they're, they're more interested in Instagram. Right. Um, <clears throat> but that's, look, here's my personality. Here's who I am. And yeah, yeah. all right, you're going to be selling your suits and you're going to sell your goggles and your nutrition, yeah. all that sort of thing. That's fine. But give us a little more, give us some, some you too. And that's yeah. like, I love seeing Caleb yeah. Dressel on his tractor, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. or, you know, uh, things like yeah. that. That's, uh, that's tell me who you are and let people yeah. know. Mm -hmm. And I think you can really build a, uh, an audience there and, and hopefully an audience that doesn't just say, Hey, what are they doing two weeks a year as opposed to, you know, being a little more interested a little more often. Yeah. Yeah. I think a guy, I think of a guy like Michael Andrew right now who kind of is doing a lot of that stuff where he's kind of letting yeah. people in a bit more and kind of takes a camera around, follows it around, follows himself around and kind of chops it up and puts it out there and lets, lets people in, you know, that's, yeah. that's a good thing. You know, I like that. It is. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Now are all your kids done with swimming completely now? They're all done. Yes, yes. My yeah. my oldest Mitchell, he he's the black sheep of the family. He's a sports writer. So okay. I, I tried to encourage him elsewhere, but you know, uh, no, he's doing fine. He's doing great. Um, middle son Clayton is actually. I shouldn't say they're all done with swimming because he's a coach for Dynamo Swim Club. Oh, there Clayton. you go. All right. Yeah. So and he's loving that. And then Brooke uh, has joined the Peace Corps and is in Peru right now. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Dang. She's what? living the the real wildlife. What is the Peace Corps exactly? Peace Corps is a national service organization uh, that John, John Kennedy started when he was the president of the United States in the mm -hmm. early 60s. Mm -hmm. And it's basically targeted to send uh, volunteers with specialties uh, out to underserved countries, a lot of third world countries to help in whatever way they can. It's a two year, 27 month actually commitment. Uh, so it's not like, you know, you're going to go build a house for a weekend and then you come back home. So, I mean, you are really committed to it. And yeah. so she is a public health officer in a rural village, mountain village in Peru, working wow. with, you know, underweight infants and trying to help uh, anemic kids to eat better, uh, doing, you know, nutrition across the board, uh, healthy pregnancies, that sort of thing. So wow. really proud of wow. her. It's, it's hard, but yeah. uh, she's doing good work. Yeah, it's massive. Did you get the feeling after she won uh, a medal in Tokyo that did you did you kind of get the sense that that would be it for her? Yeah, she wanted to finish her college uh, career. So when you know, the, and actually, <laughs> yeah, it looked for a while. You know, in twenty twenty, like that one, like twenty twenty one would be right. the end of her college career. Mm. Uh, obviously, there was no NCAA's in twenty. There wasn't twenty one, and then they granted the fifth year of eligibility. Okay, right. And she's like. Yeah, I'll do that and get a master's. And so she did. Yeah. So she got two degrees out of it. And then, yeah, then, I mean, there was no doubt um, going into her last year at Stanford that that would be it. Yeah, yeah. She she was kind of uh, um, em embroiled in the, the whole controversy of um, Leah Thomas kind of last year in that situation. I, I saw a comment where she came out and said that, 
you know, she had no real issue with it. And that's, and I'm not expecting you to talk for her in any way, but um, as a father, how did you feel about it? Yeah. I mean, that was, that was a wild uh, experience for sure. And like, I was incredibly like almost in awe of how she handled it. You know, she just was very graceful. um, And she, it was funny. I was out there about this time last year in, in Palo yeah. Alto. We had gone to a meet. Um, I think they had swam against like UC, USC and UCLA. No, no, no. It was at home. It was Arizona and Arizona State. And we went out to dinner. Uh, it's just she and I on that like su- Saturday night. And I said, you know, this is going to be a, de- a deal at NCAAs with Leah mm. Thomas. She goes, yeah. yeah, I've already written a statement. I was like, what? Really? Wow. And she, she showed it to me on her phone. And I read it. I was like, well, that's great. Wow. I, I I can't say I agreed 100% with everything she said, but she said yeah. it so well, and she took a very mature, gracious approach to it that I was like, I'm behind you 100%, you know? And then I actually, on our pod, my podcast that I do, uh, it's a college sports podcast, I did read her statement, and that kind of added some fuel to the fire. And then it was it was a little bit overwhelming to a degree to be caught up in something that heated, and really, I you know, heated in a bad way. There's like there's a lot of yeah rational people that can have rational opinions about this, but the two polar ends of the spectrum, uh, you know, I just thought took it to such a an unfortunate extreme. And being there in Atlanta, Georgia Tech, uh, you know, the protesters outside and everything, I was like, yeah. this this is really unfortunate, you know. And the the main thing to remember at the the bottom point of it to me, Brett was. Leah Thomas is a human being, so let's yeah. treat her with dignity and respect from there. You may not agree with her presence there, but let's, you know, I, I was glad there wasn't a, like significant booing in the arena or anything like that, but it was, um, it was a heck of a thing to go through. And, you know, you still, I still hear from people every once in a while, you know, why didn't you defend your daughter about swimming against a man? It's like, my daughter's 23 and has two degrees from Stanford. She can defend herself. She's <laughs> yeah. fought pretty well for yeah, herself. Yeah, she did a pretty good job for herself from what I read. So she didn't need yeah. you to jump in there for her. But, but I guess for, as a guy that does cover sport, um, a lot of people were kind of saying, well, this is the tip of the iceberg. This, this is something that's going to, you know, we're going to see more and more of this. Like a, a situation like basketball for instance like i could i could see something like that maybe coming down the pipeline like do you foresee that kind of progressing more and more as we go you know beyond here um not in a problematic way no i don't um i think first of all like the science is getting better the rules are getting better you know i think right. fina I, I'll, I'll defer to sport swimming for now but fina slash usa swimming slash the ncaa are going to have a better approach to this. Uh, other sports, let's see what their governing bodies do, and let's see, you know, where they are with it. Um, you know, could it be an issue? Yeah, um, but I, I don't think this is going to be like, you know, the doomsday scenario of, well, somebody's just going to have a whole team of guys out there. And I'm like, no, that's not going to happen. Okay, yeah. that's first yeah. of all, let's not call a trans woman a guy. Yeah. But secondly, let's not presuppose that that this is some grand scheme to win a game or a championship or a yeah. medal or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a you know? stretch, a big stretch. Yeah, that's what just stretch. killed me about the whole thing. It's like, yeah. you really think somebody's going to go through all this because they yeah. want to stand on the top of a podium? I yeah, don't. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's not, that was complete nonsense. Absolute yeah. nonsense. Um, look, you're, you're, a, you're a senior writer for Sports Illustrated. How do you get to that point? Like wh- when you write and you separate yourself from everybody else, well, what do you do that that makes you different? You think, like, how do you get to that point? I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. I don't. I don't have a, a good answer. You know, I think um, for one thing, enthusiasm for the job you right. know, is the bottom the bottom line. And I I've said, you know, I worked for a newspaper in Louisville, Kentucky, and I loved it um, for seventeen years. And about twelve years into that. Um, you know, I mean, I was covering a lot of college basketball and I think I'd done some good stuff and, and ESPN.com, which I didn't even, yeah, it was actually called ESPN sports zone. Didn't even know mm-hmm. it existed. Called me up and they're like, Hey, would you like to write like a weekly column for us? And I was like, yes, yes, I would. <laughs> and that was kind of just this thing that became like, I said, yes, to every opportunity that came yeah. out there. and you get more opportunities and you say yes, and you do a decent job. And then 2004 ESPN hired me. And so that's the main thing. It's just be willing to do the work and be enthusiastic about the work, whatever it is. And 
Uh, and then, you know, I think developing a voice as a writer, um, being a good reporter, uh, all those things are obviously extremely important, but, but first and foremost, you got to really want to do it and be, you know, want to be as good as you can be at it. Kind of yeah. like swimming or anything else. Yeah. I, I've been in a position now where I've had, uh, opportunities to kind of speak on things that, that I hear before maybe everybody else hears them. And, and maybe sometimes, or maybe even I do a, a podcast and, and there's a moment in there that, that, that I think, oh, if I clip that, that'll get, you know hundreds of thousands of views if i just clip that part you know and I, and I think to myself well that's that's not doing justice for the person that's that's speaking kind of thing like if, if even if sure. i was to clip some of what you just said and say well that's that's the point i'm gonna you know like to me you're taking away from the whole conversation you know so i've i've avoided those things but how do you how do you handle that stuff when you're you know you're putting out tweets and you're you're writing and things like how do you make that determination between oh man this is going to be good for me or hey this is the right thing to do here you know Right. No, that's a, that's a great question. Um, and you know, I, I, I fall back to what I was taught in journalism school. I went to the university of Missouri myself, it's the first mm. journalism school and still one of the best, uh, full, fair and accurate. And those were the three words. Your stories should be full. So they should be fair. They should be accurate. And some of that, you know, can be, look, it's harder and harder in a constant news cycle where things right. turn around really quickly to be, all those things. Um, it's it was harder actually in, in newspaper days when you had a finite number of column inches to write and stuff. You can't get everything in there, and so some things have got to go. But at the end of the day, you have to be able to look at the work product and say, was it full? Was it fair? Was it accurate? And then you got to face what people say about it the next day. And sometimes people, it's, sometimes it's all going to be pats on the back. That was great. That was really nice. And sometimes it's going to be the opposite. You're terrible. You're unfair. You're the worst. Mm. And so you got to take both of them for what they're worth. Sometimes, you know, you can listen too much to both sides, but um, the, the rational criticism, some, you know, a lot, sometimes, Hey, you could have done a better job. You could have done this better. And if I've been critical of someone uh, in a story I think it's important to make yourself available to them uh, as soon as possible thereafter to give them a chance to say, here's where I think you were wrong or here's where I think you were unfair. I think that's just kind of part of, of doing journalism. And I, you know, shoot, I can give you an example yeah, from Tokyo yeah. um, where what oh, the mixed medley relay where the mm -hmm. Americans kind of screwed up the order. Right. right. And Greg Mean is my daughter's coach. And mm -hmm. I love, Greg Meehan. Like, I, mm. I, I cannot say enough great things about him uh, mm. as a coach and a person. But I had to write that they screwed up the order, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I go back in the mix on the next day. And if he and, and Dave Durden want to say, well, that was stupid, let him, mm. you know? Mm. Uh, mm. Fortunately, they didn't. And I, they may have thought it, they may not have. But, but you know, mm. I, I think those things are important just to, to be accountable for what you've written. Yeah. Have you had have you had a moment in time that you can remember where you've maybe uh, sent something out too early and, and had regrets about it or anything like that? Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, many, 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 many. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think that uh, that's look. That's part of the the trap you can get in in this business and in especially in social media too. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, like I, I again just to, to keep it to swimming. I overreacted when Lydia Jacoby's goggles rolled off her face uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and they were in her mouth. And I was like, yeah. man, that, you know, that just shows she wasn't ready for this. Da, 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 right. da. Well, right. then you look at her split and it's like, oh, my God, she yeah. just swam out of her mind. So <laughs> yeah, maybe did. I should have waited to see the split, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, things like that. Yes. you. <laughs> there is a danger. You know, if, if you open your mouth as much as I do, and you, yeah. you know you do on this podcast, you're going to say yeah. something stupid eventually. Yeah, 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 definitely. That's that's going to happen. Um, yeah. What about the balance for you? What about you know you're you're a guy that has to keep up with with everything that's going on, um, and you know you got all these different time zones across the across the country. So I'm, I imagine your phone's going off. How do you keep balance in your life in terms of doing your job, doing it well, but also you know being being present at home? Yeah. Um, I, I, I got good advice on that from uh, Tim Layden, great writer for Sports Illustrated. And this is before we 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 never actually worked together, but um, this is when I was at I guess at Yahoo and he was at 
Sports Illustrated, and he covered horse racing. I covered horse racing, and I remember him saying, "I was asking him, you know, his kids were a little bit older than mine. Like, how do you manage, you know, being there and going to their events and that sort of thing, and doing your job?" And he just said, "You don't. You just burn burn it at both ends as long as you can." Yeah. And yeah. that may not be ideal, but that's that's kind of been the approach. I took a lot of early flights home from covering games to be around for. You know, a football game the kids were playing in or whatever, or just even sit around and watch football with them. Um, so, you know, it, I'm not great probably at turning it off when I need to. I've gotten better when I got older. I'm, quite frankly, I'm older and t- more tired now. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Know, it's yeah. a little bit easier to, to just say, you know what, I'm going to – I see that text at 1130 and I'll answer it tomorrow at 8. Yeah. Let it go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about, what about, uh, any, any current swimmers that you, that you can think of that, that impress you like, uh, somebody, anyone stands out? Yeah. I mean, gosh, so many, you know, I mean like internationally, I just, I, I can't wait to see what Pulpa beach, you know, yeah, continues to yeah. turn into right. summer Macintosh. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. especially she, like the events she swims, obviously mm-hmm. dovetail with Brooke and to see her at that age, I mean, was it 428, 400 IM? So I quick, mean, yeah, 428. Yeah. Uh, I mean, are you kidding at that age? Mm, and I, mm. I've watched my daughter work her butt off to swim 435. And then you see that, it's like, oh my gosh. So, yeah. you know, th- those people are intriguing. Uh, nationally, I mean, gosh, I feel, you know, it's just, it's been great. It's helped me do my job, but it's also it's just been great to get to know so many of the people, you know, to, to know Tori Husk and her family. Right. Um, I, I, I'm excited to see Claire Kurzan as her right. college career progresses. Reagan Smith, know her and her family. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, fe- I feel especially in touch with uh, the women's side, I guess, right now, just because I, I feel like I know them all. But, um, you know, they, I mean, the, one, the, the wonderful thing about the sport is they just keep coming. I mean, it's unbelievable. The, the next generation is always as good or better than the last one. What about Ledecky? What about, does she have a chance? Like if she goes on and, and, and successful in Paris, does she have a chance to be as, as well known as, as a Phelps at, at you know, did, could she get to oh, that yeah. level? Yeah, absolutely. I think so. I mean, she may, you know, she's not going to have an eight gold medal, right. you know, Holy grail all time, but, but what she does, she's obviously done better than anybody in history. Right. And I think she has so much respect. You know, she just handles herself so well. She's become more and more eloquent, more and more outgoing, more and more open, you know, about her right. feelings. I mean, I remember her sitting there on the podium in Tokyo crying while she was talking about, and it's just like, holy, you know, yeah. that's not the Kayla Ledecky I first covered in 2012, 2012, right, you know, right. and got to know a little bit really in 2015. And like her family, I love her family. They're tremendous. And she's just, you know, like the old saying, she's just been raised right. You know, she knows how to handle herself. She knows how to handle her fame. Um, I think that, you know, it's funny, you know, she'll do something and I will, I will tweet, I'll tweet sw- swimming stuff, but the Ledecky stuff gets way more traction than anything else oh, I really? tweet about swimming. Oh yeah. People, people recognize greatness and they gravitate to greatness mm-hmm. and, and she just represents that, you know? Yeah. And so I'm happy for her. She seems to be, you know, doing great now in Florida. Um, yeah. I know, you know, Brooke and her are, are good friends and uh, it's just great to see her continue on. I hope, you know, look, she's got competition now, like she's never had before. Yeah. That's the nature of the beast. And yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. And you know, that 400 free in Tokyo is incredible and it's going to, you know, it's going to keep, the, it's going to stay there in 24 and then we'll see what happens after that. Well, listen, Pat, I love it, man. Thanks for doing this. Uh, it's nice to see you're a swim nerd and uh, you're into it. <laughs> I love it. Um, but yeah, no, this has been an honor, man. I appreciate it. Thanks very much. Thank you, Brad. It's a, trust me, it's an honor for me. And uh, my, my nerd self is very excited. To be <laughs> All right. Thanks. Take care, Pat. All right. Thank you. Bye.